I don't have time for testing. We've all thought it, we've probably all said it, and we certainly know of organizations that think it. In this video, I want to look at what makes testing bad for productivity and what we can do about it. Hello, I'm Trisha G. Welcome to the Continuous Delivery Channel. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, please press like. Now, before Dave kicks me off the channel, before I've even had a chance to get started, I want to caveat what I said in the introduction about tests perhaps leading to poor developer productivity. There are some practices and some patterns which get in the way of us being productive as developers linked to testing. These kinds of things can lead to frustration and making us feel like we're not getting the job done properly. The first pattern I want to explore is writing tests for existing code. Now this existing code might be something that we wrote a week ago, or it might be something that someone else wrote three years ago. Certainly the latter case is more challenging, but even the former case where we wrote it a week ago, there's a good chance we've forgotten what we did and why we did it. Writing tests for existing code is challenging. We don't always know or remember what the code is supposed to do. We don't always know why it works in a particular way. We don't necessarily know which decisions were made and which trade-offs were made. And so we don't always know which tests to write for the code. What's usually more challenging about writing tests for existing code, particularly code that's not already tested, is that this code is usually very difficult to test. It's often difficult to poke it with the kinds of values that we want to poke it with and request the answers from it in order to ascertain what happened and did it work correctly. Code which has not been written with testing in mind is difficult to test. Dave and I would probably argue that the thing you need to do is write your tests first. Therefore, any code that you write afterwards will by definition be easier to test. This isn't always a luxury that we have when we're working on a legacy code base. So writing tests for existing code is a challenging thing. The key is to write tests as close as possible to the time that we wrote the production code. Ideally, perhaps beforehand, but if not beforehand, then certainly close enough after writing the production code that we can remember what it does, and that if we need to make some changes to the production code to make it easier to test, we can do that without jeopardizing some feature that's been used by users for three years or so. The next pattern that I want to look at is it is hard to write tests. Even if we're ready, willing, and able, and we're about to sit down and write the test for our code, it's difficult to know what the test should be, how to test the code, and what should the code do under certain circumstances, and which circumstances should we be looking for in order to test that the code works correctly under certain circumstances. It's hard, it requires a lot of thinking. However, thinking is our job, this is what we do. Thinking about what the code does when the user does something weird, or what the code does when the connection goes down, that's something we're going to have to do whether we're writing a test for it or whether we're writing the code itself. This is valuable thinking time that is part of our job. And if we do this thinking during the time of writing the test, then presumably it will take less time to think about it when we're writing the production code. On top of that, we get the added bonus of we start writing down the questions that we have. What should it do under these circumstances? How should it behave when something odd happens? So we've written those down in the form of an automated test and documented the decisions we've taken. When the user puts some malformed input in, then the code should give this kind of error message. When the connection is down, then the code should do this. So this is now documented, it's readable by other developers, and moreover, this is documentation which is run by a continuous integration server regularly. So the CI server is telling us your assumptions are still correct and the code still works the way you thought it did. The next thing that gets in the way of us being productive as developers when it comes to testing is tests that take a long time to run. This might be integration tests, tests that require an emulator, tests that need to run in a particular environment with a particular setup, or even local tests which just happen to have a lot of dependencies and have a lot going on. A test that takes a long time to run is not giving us the feedback that we want from our automated tests. Anything that takes longer than probably a minute is going to cause us to get up, go somewhere else, do something else, or check our email, generally context switch, so that when the result of the test comes in, we can't remember what we were doing, 
and what we're supposed to do about this test result, whether it's a pass or fail. Long running tests kill our flow. What we really want to do is run the test, check our assertion, make sure it works. Yes, it does, great, on to the next thing. Or it fails, okay, I better do something about that. We want it to be part of our development flow all the time. We don't want to break our flow to wait for the result of a test. What can we do about this? We should be making our tests as fast as possible, of course. That means pushing it down the testing pyramid where possible, turning integration tests into perhaps a number of unit tests, tests that don't require uh, databases, network connections, big modules that have a lot of startup time, things that can run quickly. A unit test is not necessarily one test class for a production code uh, class, but it is something which should be able to run very quickly. These tests should also ideally run on our laptop. So again, the, the focus should be trying to make it run as quickly as possible. Maybe you're going to use something like containers to make your build more reproducible. Ideally, we don't even really want something like that. If your test is validation, for example, you should just be testing input and output and not spinning up lots of different services. So where possible, our tests should be running as quickly as possible, as far down the testing pyramid as possible. We can also use techniques like running tests in parallel where possible. Our build tools usually support this where we can run our tests in parallel. Um, there are all sorts of other techniques, things like using predictive test selection to only run a subset of tests, that kind of thing. There are things that we can do to make our tests run as quickly as possible, and we should be investigating those solutions so that we're not having to wait minutes, hours, maybe even till the next day to find the results of our automated tests that we spent so much time thinking about and implementing. Overall, the answer to the problem of testing slowing us down as developers is to treat testing as a first-class citizen. It is part of our job. Thinking about what the code should do is of course what we do. But since we're going to be thinking about what the code should do, why not write that down somewhere in, say, an automated test, where we can actually check that those assertions and those assumptions are correct all the time, and when someone makes some changes, they haven't broken some behavior that we expected. We should also be treating it like a first-class citizen in terms of performance. This is not something that should just kind of like run, you know, maybe when we want to, and it takes as long as it takes, but that's okay because it's over there. No, fast-performing tests are what make us productive. So, treat tests as a first-class citizen. Write tests as soon as possible to the time at which you write your production code. Treat them as first-class citizens in terms of the performance of those tests. And never ever think that the time that you spent thinking about what to test is wasted because the thinking is the thing that takes the time and the thinking is the thing that we get paid for anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider supporting the Continuous Delivery channel on Patreon. Thanks. Thank you.